Drive. Hey folks, welcome to Out Drive. I'm Cliff Callis, and I'm here to bring you actionable marketing insights you can apply to reach, connect with, and convert rural American consumers. Join me in the front seat as we head out on the road to success. Let's go. I don't sell a drop of propane, but every day I create the opportunity for propane marketers to sell and for customers to buy from them. It's like um, people don't like to be sold, but they love to buy. We do so many different things, whether it's grain dry, you know, whether it's irrigation systems, or whether it's mine heat and power. And what drives those decisions could be everything from a need for resilience, a need for a cleaner, greener solution, a need for remote power where they have power where they wouldn't normally have it. Although it's primarily a commercial market, industrial market at this time, there are units that are in development that will maybe one day replace your furnace so that you could have the ability to generate your own electricity at home, maybe even sell some of the excess to back to the grid. Hey folks, we've got another great story to share with you today on OutDrive about life and work in rural America. Joe Calhoun is the Director of Business Development for PERC, the Propane Education and Research Council. He leads PERC initiatives to grow propane demand by working directly with partners across multiple industries. Joe is responsible for business development, product development, and market development activities. Before he started his role at PERC, Joe worked for Rego Products as Business Development Manager for the propane and industrial gas markets. He's also had prior stints at Robinson Pipe and Vessel, Transtech Energy, Ray Murray, Perico Gas, and American Welding and Tank. I had the pleasure of meeting Joe through a mutual acquaintance in the propane industry. He brings years of business experience to our podcast, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you today. Welcome to OutDrive, Joe. Thank you, Cliff. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me, and it's a pleasure to tell you a little bit more about the Propane Education Research Council. Well, we're anxious to hear more. Of course, a lot of our listeners know that propane is a big part of rural America, powering lots of different kinds of things. And we'll get into that as we get along. But before we go to that, let's talk a little bit about you and your background. You know, I think we met through mutual interest in the industry. I believe we were both admiring the same innovative mobile propane equipment and connected that way. But talk a little bit about your background growing up and your road to Perk. I grew up in the Chicago area, believe it or not, but I was never much more than one degree away from rural America. My father grew up on a farm. My grandmother had a farmette for as long as I can remember. She had something she called a garden, which was ginormous in my mind. So I grew up with family in rural America. So for me, I've never been too far away from it. Kind of my road to Perk, I've done a lot of different things. I spent a little over 20 years in the propane industry. And I think that all that what I've done, Cliff, it's kind of prepared me for what I do today. I've worked for manufacturers. I've worked for distributors. I have worked for propane marketers. And I've enjoyed all of those jobs. And for me, when I came to work at Propane, having Joseph Calhoun at Propane.com was like, man, that's it. You know, it's like the coolest thing. You've reached something that you can really be proud of and say, it's what I've always wanted to do. So I enjoy it and I'm glad I'm here. So have you always done business development? Yeah, I've always been in business development, in sales or in marketing roles, and almost always with a manufacturing company, a couple of times with a service company, like a propane company, but mostly with manufacturers. And it served me well in my role because my role at Perk in business development has me collaborating with OEMs to advance uses and users of propane. So we might work with our mutual friend in power generation 
just let folks know about what they're doing or advance their new products, give them a stage for that at trade shows or help them with commercialization plans by introducing them to folks in the propane industry. So you mentioned trade shows. I ought to just jump on that because I think you're at one right now. And when I talked to you a couple of weeks ago, you were at a different one in Vegas. What's been the climate at the trade shows that you've been at? You know, they're mostly underattended from what they've been, but I think that sometimes I look at the attendance as, do we have the right people, right? Instead of having 100 of the wrong people, do we have 50 of the right people? This particular trade show that I've been at the last couple of days here is a farm show. It's the Southeast Farm Show here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And we brought along a combined heat and power unit to show the farming community the capabilities of combined heat and power for rural America, for applications at farms, for large farms, or even for commercial applications. And it's been a really well received. Well, I think a quality audience is always better than a quantity audience, right? Yeah, exactly. So trade shows are maybe one of the tools in your tool belt for business development. What are some other types of marketing things that you do to help spread the propane message? Sure. So we work with media partners to get the message out, as you say, whether that's through social media, through publications. There are a number of articles that I've written that go into publications, whether that's some equipment magazines. We've got a a nice uh, feature piece coming out in a power generation magazine. We also will do speaking engagements and engage that way as well. We've got one coming up at another power generation related show where we're bringing in two partners to to talk about case studies of micro combined heat and power, as well as the use of microgrids for real, you know, kind of out of the way power generation, right? Like for instance, one is in use in California in an area that is vulnerable to wildfires. So this rural area where they have to shut down those overhead lines because there's the danger of sparks from overhead lines causing those wildfires, now don't have those risks. They've been mitigated by putting in a solar array with a propane powered backup generator and a battery pack, which then powers a station there. It's near Lake Tahoe. You know, that's just some of the kinds of solutions we get involved with. Well, that's pretty cool. What do you think drives the innovation in the industry? Because there's a lot going on, right? Well, there's always a lot going on here at Perk. But what drives the innovation is varied. In the farm community, for instance, I would say, you know, even though we as propane are in 800,000 farms across the country, which is just a little less than half, right? And that while it seems like this big wide swath, we do so many different things, whether it's grain dry or whether it's irrigation systems or whether it's combined heat and power. And what drives those decisions could be everything from a need for resilience, a need for a cleaner, greener solution, a need for remote power where they have power where they wouldn't normally have it. You reference agriculture industry, and and of course, that's certainly prevalent in rural America, but propane goes across lots of different industries, right? Talk to us a little bit about some of the other industries and, and uses for propane that most people probably don't know about. So I would say a lot of people don't know that propane helped in backup power applications for the railroads during last year's winter storm in Texas. So the switches and the gates are often, you know, they need to be controlled when the power is off. It's the number one safety concern for the railroads. So a lot of those are powered with propane. A lot of folks don't realize that. They quite literally saved the rail industry during huge power outages in Texas last year during February. I think other things that folks don't realize about propane is it could be used for power backup often used for a generator at a home, yes, but it can be used in power backup at a commercial facility. We do an awful lot. You're aware of the 
of the small 25 kW units, but that's just one sector, right? We're involved with companies that have a full range of products in the portfolio, different companies, so that we can offer mobile, total portable solutions with propane from small applications with maybe 25 kW up to 450, 500, maybe even two megawatts of power. So a lot of folks don't realize that. So that's where you're talking about of a microgrid. You're talking about a nanogrid. So propane also home building and a lot of designers are incorporating propane appliances into homes like never before. Furnaces, stoves, fireplaces. Hot water heat on demand hot water. So, you know, a tank or without a tank. Combined heat and power, as I'd mentioned before, Although it's primarily a commercial market, industrial market at this time, there are units that are in development that will maybe one day replace your furnace so that you could have the ability to generate your own electricity at home and maybe even sell some of the excess to back to the grid. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, that'd be awesome. It's kind of like the cable industry. You know, once you cut the cable, you don't go back. I think that once we get folks generating their own power for their own use, Folks are never going to go back to using the grid all the time. Don't you think that a large part of the population is just not aware of all the potential ways to use propane either in their life in some way? I think that's right. It's all awareness, right? And letting folks know that these products are available, these companies are developing products. And that's our job at PERC. And we, we do that in a variety of ways by collaborating with our OEMs at trade shows, by presenting at trade shows, or even doing online seminars. We have a monthly technology seminar that we put on called Propane Presents. So next month, we'll be talking about a remote powered system by a company out of Utah. We'll be talking about their systems, which are uh, kind of in that five to 10 kilowatts of power range. So let's talk just a minute about PERC, the Propane Education and Research Council. What are you trying to accomplish as an organization? What are your goals and objectives? So our goals and objectives are pretty clear. I mean, we have a, a long range plan that's public. They include increasing uses and users of propane. That's really why we're here. And to do it safely. How do we do it? We're a checkoff program. So we take our industry very seriously and invest their money in new technologies, as well as safety programs, as well as consumer education programs to advance propane and continue to tell the story, you know, that propane is a a clean energy and it accelerates decarbonization today. Yeah, there's a real push for the environmental story about propane, correct? Uh, Yeah, absolutely. You know, propane's environmentally friendly. It's an excellent way to reduce emissions still while meeting all of your energy needs. You don't have the particular matter that you get with diesel products. Using propane, there's fewer emissions using the equivalent amount of propane than there is for electricity generated by the U.S. grid. So for instance, we've done some comparison of wells to wheels on school buses. In that medium duty range of engine, the emissions from a propane powered school bus are less than the grid emissions of producing electricity in 38 out of 48 states. So we really are the cleaner choice so many of the times. Than electric buses. Than electric, yeah. And that's a comparison that's based upon medium duty versus a a school bus, just for the sake of the argument, right? Right, right. You know, you mentioned to me that you were at a trade show in Raleigh, North Carolina today. What's your typical day look like? There isn't really a typical (laughs) day. I wish there was, Cliff. But I guess telling you about this experience is probably a good example of just what we do at PERC. One of our counselors had contacted a senior member of our staff and said, you know, we'd really like to have a combined heat and power unit at this show. Can you guys see about getting an OEM to provide one? I was actually in Las Vegas at the show where I had talked to you briefly before and got on the phone, got a hold of a few of my OEM friends A few days later, had OEM set up to come out here. We got the unit here. The unit's now sold. They're going to be using it for a training center 
here in North Carolina that will also train folks in, in the industry, as well as our allied partners on using propane. So to me, that's kind of a cool day in the life, but yet an, a fun little success story. So not only did we get a unit out here very quickly, we got it sold in the process. So it's all good. All good. We'll talk a little bit about this facility because I've heard about it. In fact, some of the people that we do business with in Missouri have talked about going out and touring it because it's uh, so innovative. Yeah, it's called NC Tech, TEC. It's a joint venture of different state associations and they use their own PERC dollars. So we have a checkoff program and we are a checkoff program on a national level, but then the states also have their own. And so they've partnered with their own states to provide this learning center for propane. So their folks can come and learn and be certified with what is called CTEP, the Certified Training Program of the Propane Industry. So they will leave with those certifications. It's a, it's a fantastic program and they are anticipating training 800 new students through their facility over the next two years is one of their goals to get through that facility in, in training our industry. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a big lift, but there's some really great people behind it and it's a fantastic organization. So what other kind of cool things like that are going on around the country to make people more aware of propane or to train more people in the industry? What comes to mind? Going around the country and training people. So some of our OEMs are actually really good at that by using demonstration units at different trade shows themselves. Um, We've got a power generation going unit going to the World Ag Expo in California that will have a unit there that a couple of propane markers will be then using in California to demonstrate it to their customers. So it works at different levels, right? So there's the trade show level, and then there's the propane marketer level working with their customers to demonstrate products. So a lot of exciting stuff going on there. The one sort of fun, exciting thing to tell you about, to me, it's the, but wait, there's more, right? Is that the big game, as it were, between the Rams and the Bengals is the pregame. We'll have a propane powered unit there supplying the electricity for the media crew. So I'm really proud to just say we, we will be contributing to that big game this year. That's exciting to hear that propane is going to be in the Super Bowl. You seem like you're really good at what you do just in talking to you. What do you think makes a good business development person? I think it takes the ability to connect opportunities with the right resources, whether that's human or otherwise. So I'm one of these people that can just connect the dots. To me, that is what I've been able to do that is a big part of my success. And I think the way I've been able to do that is by building relationships that are meaningful relationships for my industry and been able to connect my friends in this industry to others so that we can make a difference. It's been fun. I've enjoyed it when I see the success of others. You know, that to me is maybe more rewarding than any successes I have. So what would you say to a young person that was considering following in your footsteps? See, in business development, I would say, you know, that it's pretty simple. Follow your heart and integrity. You know, it's about integrity. When it comes to being in business development, well, I'll use the analogy I use with, with my job at Perk. Some people will say, well, you just sell propane. I'm like, I don't sell a drop of propane. But every day I create the opportunity for propane marketers to sell and for customers to buy from them. I've heard it said that people don't like to be sold, but they love to buy. You don't go to the car dealer and say, I want to be sold a car. You say, I want to buy a car. And that's my advice to anybody who wants to go into business development. That's great advice. Great advice. 
So let's let's uh, let's talk a little bit about rural America again. You know, our sure. podcast is focused on marketing to rural America, uh, and you you've had exposure your whole life. When I say the words rural America, what does that mean to you? Oh, it's salt of the earth people that are honest, hardworking, and and trust. You know, you build trust. You know, these are the folks that they go to church on Sunday. And, you know, they, they do what they say they're going to do. And that to me is, is people in rural America. So you earlier had mentioned about the wildfires uh, out in Western America and you, and you dropped the word rural there. I think many times when people think of rural America, they just think about the heartland. They think about the Midwest, but there's rural America everywhere, right? Absolutely. Yeah. When we don't think about like those wildfires are, they rage in areas that are largely unpopulated and that rural area in Northern California near Lake Tahoe is very sparsely populated. But, you know, as I said before, I just, I, I enjoy that propane is a part of a solution there that, you know, here's where we are not only um, providing energy, but we're providing energy to an area that wouldn't have it normally and is help preventing wildfires in the future. Yeah. So you've lived all over the United States, right? I have not. I know it looks like I might have. If you look at my resume, I've worked for organizations that are located in different places, but I've been fortunate to live in, and and work out of my home for a long time. I live in an area just north of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I live about 15 minutes north of the city of Harrisburg, just in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. I have a, a view of a mountain from my backyard and a view of a creek, a view of the Susquehanna River. Um, there's a tiny little burrow down below, like a village, if you will, of homes, but there isn't a stoplight in the town I live in. So. I'm, you know, I, I guess I would say where I live is definitely more rural than suburban. That's for sure. Well, it sounds like you were way out ahead of the work from home trend that's uh, swept the country the last couple of years. Well, you know, it's funny you say that, you know, like I said, I've done this for a long time and I could remember um, digging in on something. I had some numbers I was crunching to try to analyze and got them in late in the afternoon one day and you know i can remember my wife kind of shouting up the stairs to me it was around 6 30 and she said when are you going to be home from work <laughs> <laughs> so that's just a great example of working from home it's that's the hardest part for me and i think in some ways cliff it's become sort of the bane of the COVID existence is that there's less separation now between work and leisure. Uh, people tend to work all the time. And my only caution to people is just be present, whatever you're doing. And I, I try quite literally to unplug from devices for at least one whole day every week. It's hard. Yeah, I think that that goes a long way in being able to keep work and, you know, leisure, leisure. Yes. So you kind of anticipated, I think, my follow-up question, which was, you know, there's a lot of people that work from home is new to them. They're still trying to adapt. They're trying to figure it out. They're trying to be productive. And of course, their employers, they're expecting them to be productive. Do you have any other advice to help people excel in that work from home environment? I would say that for me, the, the advice I would give folks is use the tools that you have because, you know, you, you can do that. Like, for instance, um, tools like this, Zoom and you know, Teams meetings and these kinds of things, use those tools. They're great tools to just even just catch up with someone or have an introductory meeting. I think that in what I do, some introductory meetings will will never be in person ever again. If I'm meeting someone from an OEM for the first time, I think this kind of a meeting will 
will always be that introductory stage. You know, I'm not going to jump in a plane and go have a two hour meeting with someone. Although that I think that there is that opportunity. So my, I guess my advice would be to folks that you kind of have to know when to do what. So know, know when it's a good idea to just have a meeting like this over the airwaves, so to speak. And sometimes it's more appropriate that you really have to sit belly to belly as it were and, and talk it out. Now, that's That would be some of my advice for people that are transitioning and, you know, and back to that earlier statement, just be present, whatever it is you're doing, be present. That's great advice. Of course, COVID has changed so many things over the last couple of years. And did it impact the propane industry at all? So I would say yes, in terms of, you know, we're, we were deemed an essential industry, obviously, because energy is essential to, to everyone. It impacted different sectors in different ways. We had so many cylinders disappear from those cages, right? Those cages where you would exchange a tank. I don't know if you, you know, if you belong to a, to a shopping club, like a Sam's club or a, or a Costco, but it used to be pre COVID, you would see, a, you know, a, an end block full of propane tanks uh, for grills. I haven't seen them since COVID, right? The demand for small cylinders is huge. People have expanded what they use them for at home, for outdoor heat, for other auxiliary heat, for fire pits. Fire pits were just all the rage for a while during COVID because people were home. They want to enjoy their, their time at home. So they're investing in those things instead of a vacation. So it has been a good benefit to the propane industry overall, not just small cylinder exchange, but, but in general, uh, the business has done very well with COVID. Some of the losses on the commercial side really have been balanced out by the fact that people are at home more and using their heat more. And certainly this winter has helped too. This has been a winter. But we're right in the middle of winter as we're recording this. What's the supply of propane like right now? So the supply of propane is good. You know, overall, we produce 30 billion, with a B, uh, gallons of propane a year, and we export about 20 and use about 10 in this country. We have plenty of propane. Um, the shortages are in the equipment side. Folks are six and eight and nine months out on equipment. So even just a backup generator, right, for your home is probably a six or eight month lead time between getting the product in and um, being able to install it. Well, I assume that that's a, that's a cause that's caused because of an increased demand for the yep. equipment and then the supply chain that's hit, you know, virtually every industry in some way. Is that right? That's right. And again, back to the everybody's home all the time and back to the demand side, you know, we really, don't have trouble getting getting products so much of propane so much as we have more trouble getting people to deliver people to service to do the in, new installs of equipment um, we're having more trouble getting people than we are having the product itself in our industry uh, yeah. so we're always you know again the, the importance of the NC pack and training so many people we never never has training our industry been more important. Yeah. And uh, of course that workforce challenge has hit again, just like the supply chains hit every industry. And I don't know what the answer is to that, but certainly we want to continue to attract new people into the propane industry and then provide them with the, the tools and training they need to be able to service, service customers. Yeah. I've really enjoyed visiting with you today. Thank you. What else uh, would you like to share with our OutDrive audience today, Joe? Wow. I, you know, I really just want to say thank you again. I hope you learned something about the, the key uses and some, maybe some uses you didn't think of before about propane, the benefits of propane in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions or 
being energy for everyone. It's our brand. We like to say that, you know, propane is energy for everyone. And we think that that means energy equity for, for all. It really is an equitable solution for so many different energy needs and choices. Your job and mine is to make more people aware of that. Yeah, exactly. Every day. Every day. Joe, thanks for being with us. Hey, no, thank you for having me. I really appreciate this. And um, we'll look forward to staying in touch with you and your organization and would appreciate hearing from your listeners. So thank you. Thank you, Joe. Folks, thanks for listening to OutDrive. I hope you've enjoyed our visit today with Joe Calhoun, the Director of Business Development for the Propane Education and Research Council. Come back again next week and I'll take you down the roads of rural America, where it's heaven on earth. Thanks for taking a ride with us on OutDrive. This episode is complete, so head on over to eCalis.com for show notes and more insight you can apply to help drive your business growth. And be sure to sign up for our free monthly e-letter, OutThink, for even more helpful content about marketing to rural America. Have a great day and keep on driving.